Good morning, photographers. You ever take one of them sunsets and snap a picture of it, and this is what you get? Everything in the foreground is dark, but you always see all these people online with these beautiful sunsets where you can see the foregrounds, the mids, all the way to the back where the ocean stops in your sun. Yeah, one of, one of those photos like this, this is what you're looking for. But you get this. Today, we're going to teach you how to bracket your camera and take these shots of seven frames um, from dark to light, from basically underexposed, you get to the middle to where you kind of want to be, and then the overexposed. And we're going to show you how to merge all those into Photoshop today and bring out a picture just like this. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do this to get away today. I didn't get my video capture card in for my camera so I could you know, record the screen live. So what I'm gonna do is just go, I took a bunch of pictures the back of the camera. I'm gonna show you how to set this up for bracketing. So first thing we wanna do is go into your menu and then you want your second icon from the end. You're gonna go down to number of brackets to shoot. Now you click on that and you can set this up for three brackets, five or seven. Click that and we'll click on set. And then we'll go over to your first icon and you're going to go to exposure comp. And we are going to click on that. We're in this first camera and option two or tab two of this setting screen. Now, when you see this, you won't have all these little lines here. So you're just going to have one big line. So how do you get to that? And it's easy. You take your little dial here up by your shutter button, your trigger, and then you turn that until you bring out your last one here under three stops down. And then your last one here will automatically be on three stops above. This is how we want to set this up to be able to capture seven shots, seven different exposures. This will allow us to combine them in Photoshop as an HDR image, and then we can pull out all these details. So once you get your camera set up like this, we're good to go. Okay, so we have Adobe Bridge loaded up. And these are all the shots I took out last night. I wasn't feeling too good. Still not feeling that good today. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you how to take these seven photos and we're going to load these into HDR Pro and Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to... I'm going to do it a little different than most people do. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you a quick preview. You can hit your Enter key on your keyboard when you have all seven of these selected. This will bring up Camera Raw. And we want to be able to merge all these details all the way up to the overexposed. You see how the overexposed grabs the trees? That's what we're looking for to get them trees, but still have a nice background with the sun and a little more color. So now that we have that, I'm going to cancel this because I'm not going to do it the way they do it. So let's bring up Bridge again. We're going to go up here to Tools, Photoshop, Merge HDR Pro. Now this is going to go through a little process. I'm just going to line all these layers up on top of each other make sure they're perfectly set so it's like one picture and then it's going to load up hdr pro so we can tweak it a little bit there but i'm going to take it a different way i'm going to show you how to do this and capture the most detail and be able to edit it okay here's our editor for doing our hdr work with bracketing first thing we want to do is watch this water right here we're going to click on up here. See this where it says remove ghosts. We're going to click on that and then it takes out anything blurry. Like if these trees are blowing in the wind, it'll pick out one of the best frames here or you can pick it. Um, but if you look, we got a little color mishap there. So let's see. Now I clicked on that one and it kind of brings the skies back to where we want them to be. And you watch, you can see the water move as I click those. So we're going to take that one. That one looks good. Then we're going to hit open. It's going to go and bring it back into Photoshop. 
once it does, gets in creating this file. Okay, so it looks kind of flat, right? We haven't done any editing to bring out these highlights and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to File, Save a Copy. We're going to go down here and switch it to TIFF. And I already have one in there, but I'm just going to save this over the top of that one. So this is Sunset Palm Trees. Okay. Do we want to write yes? Because I don't care about that one anymore. Click OK. Now... That's saved so we can close it. We don't need to save this file here. Um, if you want to come back to it, yes, we can save it. So let's do that. So I'm going to name this number two. Because I already have one in there that I have edited. Okay. Now, we're going to go back to open. We're going to find that TIFF file that we just saved right here. We're going to go to open. Now we're back in camera raw. What we want to do is make this look more, a little more pleasing. I don't like this tree here. I like this tree. This is going to be our subject. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on auto and see how it brings all this up. And I'll show you how to remove these little objects here that are just not pleasing to the eye. So we can bring up our shadows. We'll bring up our exposure. I don't know if I'm going to bring up the exposure. Let me show you. Bring up our clarity. Pick up our dehaze. I'm darkening up just a little bit. Blacks are fine. Highlights, you can play with those. If you take out too much or give it too much, it kind of gets icky. So we're going to keep it right about there. Whites will be the whole thing. Right, we don't want to really mess with that too much. Keep it there. We can try some curves. So I'm going to set a point there, a point here, and a point here. So I can, you can move this curve and it'll change your clouds a little bit. Don't want to do it too much. That's perfect. So I didn't move it much. We're always going in like an S shape, it seems to be. So now let's go over to this little button here. This is where you can mask your subject. There's a better way to mask this, but I'm going to show you the quick way. So we're going to click on subject. Kind of got the tree. Um, and you can really get in there. All we're going to do right now is just show you how to bring this up. So we're going to bring this exposure up in this tree just a little bit. The shadows up on the tree. The highlights we'll play with. There's really not much there. Too gonna get too carried away with it. Uh I wanna bring up the exposure a little more. Now see in here didn't really select or deselect all of those. It just kind of did a basic of the tree. Uh, we can really get in there with different ways to do it. Right now I'm just showing you how to do HDR and hopefully you won't have all this here. Now that I've said that, you guys will notice it, but most people won't even notice it when I do it from there. So I think that's a little too much. We'll back it down a little bit. Okay. Now that we got that done, we can bring this over into Photoshop, just like this, I think. And then let's play with this saturation just a little bit. I'm going to go too much. If you go too much, then it's way too much. Oh, we're on the same tree. Oh, we got to go back to, sorry about that. Set that back to zero by double clicking it. Go back over here to our basic editing. Now, vibrance we can bring up. If you go too much, you know, it's start to look too artsy. We don't want it. We kind of keep this real. We can bring it over to a black and white. But let's keep it right about there. Saturation just a tiny bit. 
Okay, we should be good there. So now we're going to open this up into Photoshop. And I'm going to show you. Now we're going to start taking out... I'm going to use a spot healing brush. I have generative fill. We can show you that in a minute. So I don't like this buoy. And I don't like this rock. And I don't like this wave here. Easy as that. I don't even like this little piece of this tree here. So we can brush that out and it's gone. You can really take all this out. I'm not into that now. So if you have the new Photoshop, you have this cool thing called generative fill. So we'll click, I don't like this tree. So I'm gonna take this whole tree out, including the roots. Go right over and take out this grass too. A lot of people, mostly the old guys, are all worried about this AI stuff, but what you're doing is creating something pleasant for somebody to see and fall in love with. Okay, we got that selected. There's our generative fill box. We don't want to do anything but just get rid of that tree. So you click generative fill, generate. Now it's going to go through this process and it'll create three little thumbnails down here that you can pick from. And that one looks pretty good. Well, let's check the other ones. You can see how it changes the sky, but nobody will ever see that. It changed the rocks down here a little bit. So it's a kind of a rounded rock. That one's okay. That one looks more realistic, actually, so we're going to go with that one. Okay, so we got the tree taken out. What we want to do now is we want to take... This generative fill, we want to merge it. This will make it one layer. So now that we got one layer, I'm going to show you some of the actions I got. Now, this is everything step by step what I would do for reduced noise and channeling to unsharpen maps, sharpen maps. I did all of this. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. That would take forever to do, right? So we're going to take that and just push play. Watch the image. You can see I just added a folder, lightened it up a little bit, sharpened everything up, made it really nice and pretty. So we're also going to go down to here. And this is going to add a little drama to it. So we're going to add the drama to try to stay out of drama in our groups. But this gives it a nice, clean look. Um, there's two, two settings here. You can take the eyeball to get rid of that I usually do. That would be this one here and this one here. Oh, nope, my bad. It'll be your one, two, three, your third and fourth one down. That'll darken it back up a little bit. This way your eyes kind of now focusing here. You do kind of focus over here in the palm tree, but that's the point that's our subject. So that is the basics to doing an HDR photo, getting your foreground in focus, getting your background to foreground so you can see everything. You don't get the silhouette of the trees and just an orange sun. This actually brings out a pleasing picture that a lot of people will comment on. I'm going to put a link of these raw files in the description. Uh, this way you guys can download it and play with this, the seven brain frames. All you need is Adobe Photoshop. Camera Raw comes in Adobe Photoshop. The only other thing you're going to need to use is um, Bridge. But usually Bridge is free with Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, I don't use Lightroom. I've never really played with it. I like Photoshop. I've been with Photoshop since version 2. I think that was 92, 93 error. But yeah, that's it. This is how you create a beautiful photo. It looks like God painted something right there in the sky, and now it's on your computer.
you can download these files and edit along with this tutorial. I might have to pause it because I kind of zipped through it. But other than that, we are good. Have a good night. God bless. Enjoy your sunsets.